Welcome to this tutorial about using a Redport Global Router for email and web browsing on an Iridium open port system. Presented by Dr. Louis Soltero, PhD, MCS, CTO and President of Global Marine Networks and Redport Global. GMN's products and services are used worldwide, and the following training contains excerpts from a Skype call between the United States and Australia. Although this is typical of GMN's global service coverage, the vast distance of this particular call resulted in occasional audio noise and echo. Regardless, the information is clear and concise and helpful. Now, here's Dr. Soltero. So the next thing I want to do then is I want to go and show you how to configure this thing. What you'll do is you will actually go to the router, and I'll do that right now. I have a router here, and this is what the web interface is going to look like for the router. I'm just going to make that nice and big so that you can see it. This is a WXA203. You will not be able to browse the internet or anything once you've got this hooked up. You will, however, be able to enter 192.168.0.1 and go to the Reading Open Core config page. But by default, you're not going to be able to browse the internet or do anything until you actually configure this router. Let's talk about web browsing first and then talk about email next because web browsing is pretty straightforward. You're going to want to do some web browsing and so you need to configure the unit to allow web browsing. Web browsing is not allowed by default because nothing is allowed through this router except Xscape. And so if you open up a web browser and try to browse the internet, you're just going to get pages that inaccessible, blah, and that's it. Which is exactly what you want because you want to eliminate all traffic to the internet except for those pages that you want to view. So you need to configure the router for web compression. So you're going to go to services, proxy server, and you're going to go to the tab that says compression, and you're going to enable web compression. And when you do that, you're going to have to enter a username, which has to be assigned to you. We'll uh, send you some information when we process your order. As soon as you do that, you've enabled web compression. Note that you've got several different compression levels. Right now, I've used standard compression. You probably want to go to maximum compression. Uh, that will resample the images and make them look really, really blocky. Um, but it will reduce the amount of bandwidth that you use when you're browsing the internet. But you can play with that. And so you will just select the compression level, standard or maximum, and then hit the save button and that enables the compression. Now, you still can't browse the internet because the internet is blocked. Now, there's two things that you can do. You can open up the firewall to allow internet access using something called transparent proxy. That means that if I open up the firewall and just allow web browsing, anybody who browses the internet will browse with compression. The disadvantage of doing that is that by allowing web browsing, by opening up the firewall, then any process that is on the local network that wants to access port 80 or port 443 on the internet will have access to that, even though they're not web browsers. Uh, they will be using compression, but they'll still be accessing the internet without your permission. And what I'm going to recommend is you use the second method for configuring browsing. The proxy server is configured on port 3128. And so what you can do is you can configure your browser, and I'm going to use Firefox right now. So you would go to Firefox, you would configure a manual proxy. You would go to Preferences, and on the Preferences, you would go to Network. You would just click Settings. This is going to bring up this screen, which is the proxy screen. By default, the web browser is going to have proxy disabled. What you want to do is you want to enable manual proxy configuration. And what you're going to do is you're going to enter the IP address of the router, which is going to be 192.168.10.1, and that port number that I just showed you, which is 3128. And then you're going to hit save. As soon as you do that, this browser will be able to browse the internet. And it'll be able to go to any web page that you want to go to. It'll have compression. It'll also allow you to go to secure pages and view secure pages, which have no compression, but they're still being transited through the proxy server and the firewall with nothing else on the local network. So what I recommend is, is that if you've got so few people on the vessel and you only have one or two computers that will be browsing the internet, that you configure the web browsers for those computers to use manual proxy configuration, just like I've dictated here, so that those computers and only those computers will access the internet and only this browser will access the internet. So your Windows updates, all of the other stuff that's happening in the background is not going to make it over the internet, only the browser itself and the pages that you browse to. You can do this configuration with Internet Explorer. You can do this in with Safari. Any web browser that you've got is going to support this feature. 
even your iOS devices will support proxy configuration. And so you would just need to manually set the proxies for those. That's all you have to do and you're done. Uh, you don't have to modify the wire firewall or anything. As soon as you do this, you'll be able to browse the internet. I'm just gonna show you just basically what this looks like. Uh, it's web uh, I'm just gonna use the X web server from directly 119 and just show you what this looks like so that you can basically see what's expected. So I'm just gonna bring up uh, CNN.com. Um, I have maximum compression enabled. And so you will see, I don't know if you can see those pictures, but they're pretty blocky, but still very yeah. visible. Uh, you notice that the ads are not there. All the ads are basically gone. Um, and so your images are compressed, the ads are gone. Well, that ad is still there, but uh, most of the ads are gone, or they should be. Um, and, um, and your images are reduced. And so this is going to reduce your web pages by a factor of three to five. Three to five is on average is what we see. Uh, if you go to hotmail.com, that's normally about 4.4 .4 megabytes just to log in. If you use XWeb with maximum compression, it's about 600 kilobytes. So dr dramatic difference for that particular website. Um, on CNN.com, your mileage will vary. I mean, this particular page I'm looking at right now is 700 kilobytes compressed. So, um, you know, it's not real cheap to browse the internet, but you can do it. And it's, if you just limit yourself to what pages you go to, then you'll be fine. 